Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. What's going on guys, this is Rob, and since you all really seem to like the return of How to Kill Superheroes, I figured we'd go ahead and throw up another installment in that series, and today we're going to figure out the best way to kill Carnage. But before we do that, we're going to look into the origin and powers of his character to see why killing him is actually a lot harder than it seems. So Carnage was created by David Michelini and Mark Bagley and first appeared in The Amazing Spider-Man number 361 in 1992. Now the Carnage symbiote is the first offspring of the Venom symbiote, which we first see when Eddie Brock, who was the host of the Venom symbiote, is incarcerated at Rikers Island, and his cellmate is a man named Cletus Cassidy, a convicted serial killer. Now, Brock had been temporarily separated from the Venom symbiote, but it found him inside the cell and then rebonded with him, which allowed him to escape. What Brock didn't know was that the symbiote had left behind an offspring in the cell, which bonded to Cletus Cassidy. Now, once bonded to the symbiote, Cassidy became the supervillain known as Carnage, escaped from the prison, and then went on a killing spree, and would be a frequent antagonist of both Spider-Man and Venom. Now, while Cletus Cassidy is the first and most frequent host of the Carnage symbiote, it has bonded to multiple other hosts at various times in the past. Most notably, it bonded with Ben Riley, who was operating as Spider-Man at the time and took on the symbiote in an attempt to keep it from killing any more innocent people. Now, Riley tries to kill the symbiote using microwaves, and while this did force the symbiote to separate from him, it did not succeed in killing it. Instead, it's found its way back to Cletus Cassidy. Another notable host of the Carnage symbiote is long time Spider-Man nemesis Norman Osborn, who steals it from a S.H.I.E.L.D. facility and then bonds with it, becoming the Red Goblin. Now, during his final altercation with the Red Goblin, Spider-Man hits the Carnage symbiote with a gas tank that explodes and seemingly kills it. However, some of the symbiote remains in the body of Norman Osborn's grandson, Normie, and most recently, we saw the Carnage symbiote bond with Eddie Brock during the events of Absolute Carnage and the subsequent Venom Island story arc. And so moving on to powers, the Carnage symbiote grants its host a variety of powers. First and foremost, it greatly enhances the physical strength and durability of its host. And in the case of Cletus Cassidy, because he and the symbiote share a bond that's more complete than Venom and Eddie Brock did, his strength is made even greater by the Carnage symbiote than Eddie Brock's strength was by the Venom symbiote. And so he is able to change his shape, which he uses to make organic weapons from the symbiote that are literally part of his body. These weapons have taken a variety of forms, including swords and axes, as well as projectile weapons such as spears and darts, and have even taken the form of tendrils that can invade the mind of others and control their thoughts. He can also change the appearance of the symbiote to camouflage himself as well as alter his size. Now, because the Carnage symbiote is an offspring of the Venom symbiote itself that inherited all the powers of Spider-Man when it was bonded with Peter Parker, Carnage has all those powers as well. And so he can crawl on walls and create web-like tendrils to swing from. He also has an ability similar to Peter Parker's spider sense, which allows him to see in all directions simultaneously, making it difficult to take him by surprise and is furthermore undetectable by Spider-Man's spider sense. Now, in addition to the fact that his powers will allow him to kill most anybody that would think of attacking him instantly, one of the things that makes Carnage so hard to kill is how durable the symbiote is. It survived blasts from the Nova Force, the explosion of missiles, and blasts from Genesis, which is a younger version of Apocalypse, as well as being attacked by Doctor Doom. Carnage also possesses a regenerative healing factor that's so powerful that he can regrow lost limbs in a matter of seconds. On one occasion, Carnage's head is actually blown up, and the symbiote simply reconstructs it instantaneously. During the Axis event, when Carnage had his personality inverted to become a hero, he sacrifices himself by enveloping a bomb that was powerful enough to wipe out the entire human race. And while we were led to believe that this was the end of Carnage, we know that it's not actually destroyed since we've seen him pop back up several times since then. In fact, the Carnage symbiote was actually present in Cletus Cassidy's bloodstream, so it could actually regenerate itself from one drop of Cletus's blood. And so as we can see throughout his time in Marvel Comics, every time someone tries to kill the Carnage symbiote, even though there have been several instances where it was presumed to have been destroyed, it always manages to survive and reappear sometime down the road. So, when we're trying to formulate a way to permanently rid ourselves of the Carnage symbiote, the first question we should ask is whether the symbiote has any weaknesses that we can exploit. Traditionally, the race of symbiotes that Carnage belongs to have a few weaknesses that have always affected them. One of those weaknesses is a vulnerability to sonic attacks, which have been shown to have devastating effects on most symbiotes, particularly Venom. I mean, who could forget the iconic scene in the bell tower in the beloved hit film Spider-Man 3, right? But there have been instances where Sonics have been shown to have a limited effect on Carnage, but after he was exposed to the Darkhold, a book containing knowledge of dark magic, these
these weaknesses seem to have completely disappeared, so that's probably not the best route for us to take. Another weakness that we could exploit is fire, which has proven to be extremely effective against symbiotes. Again though, Carnage has proven less susceptible to fire than other symbiotes. As I mentioned earlier, the symbiote somehow survived a gas tank explosion and he's taken blasts from Sunfire without being seriously harmed. Now there have certainly been instances where fire has been shown to cause Carnage pain, but I don't think that this weakness is enough to make it life-threatening. But don't worry, Robcore, all hope is not lost. One thing that we have been shown to significantly damage the symbiote is microwave radiation. In fact, during a battle with Firestar, that she could have killed Carnage if she had not voluntarily stopped short of doing so. We also see this vulnerability come into play when Ben Riley uses microwaves to separate himself from the symbiote. And so perhaps we can generate enough microwave radiation to take out the symbiote for good. If that doesn't work, the symbiote has also shown a vulnerability to some of the dark magic practiced by the worshippers of the Elder God Cathar and was in fact only able to escape from them because the magic did not affect Cletus Cassidy. And so theoretically, if the symbiote could have been separated from Cassidy prior to being captured by the cult of Cthone, then they could have been successful in their plan to sacrifice it. And I think that one of those methods, or perhaps both of them working in tandem, is our best way of killing Carnage. At this point, we could just throw the symbiote in a microwave and then have it cursed by Cthone, and then we win. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we would have to use the microwave radiation to separate the symbiote from its host and then use dark magic to get rid of it once and for all. But let me know what you guys think right? Killing Carnage is much, much harder than you would originally think, right? You would assume that killing him would be the same way as killing like Venom or somebody like that. Not so. He's just an exceedingly like durable character. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like and I will catch you all later. Peace.